Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Philosophy Hour of Literary Tales. I'm your host, Paul Krauss, and in this episode, we continue our summary of Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics by turning to the intellectual virtues in Book 2. In our first episode, we covered the basic understanding of Aristotle's virtue ethics and how it produces happiness in life. Happiness is what all humans ultimately try to achieve, and the best way to do this is through engaged living in accordance with the understanding of our nature. And as we covered in the previous episode, that is understanding that we are social animals and therefore desire to be excellent in everything that we do, because by being excellent in everything we do, we are excellent in life, and we are ultimately happy with our existence. Moving into the intellectual virtues, because the intellect is so important in Aristotle, our happiness is contingent upon understanding who we are and the world we inhabit, the intellectual virtues are essential in living the happy life. This is because the actions that we take, the actions and activities that we engage in in life, are motivated and rooted in certain understandings, an understanding of good, an understanding of evil, an understanding of what humans desire. By having intellectual virtues, by having high degrees of knowledge, we begin to understand how to act in certain situations and in acting accordingly and properly according to our nature, we are happy in what we do. This is because humans are engaged, active creatures. We are not simply minds contemplating rational thought forever and ever, our rational inquiry and our understanding of life and existence impacts us in concrete examples in everyday life. We are not born with moral virtue. We cultivate, grow, and acquire them through knowledge and putting that knowledge into practice. And in, putting those, and in putting that knowledge into practice, we cultivate virtue through habit. This leads many to believe that Aristotle offers up a proto-blank slate from which moral virtues can be cultivated universally, even if only a few humans actually achieve this. But this is a bit misleading because, as we mentioned, Aristotle's entire understanding of existence is a combination of the empirical and the rational. A priori truths do exist, and when we come to know them, we embody them in this empirical life. Aristotle argues that we ought to study ethics not in order to know what virtue is in of itself, in the a priori rational sense, but because by coming to know virtue, by coming to know the reality of existence, by cultivating that intellectual knowledge, it enhances our life in the body. The study of ethics is about living the good life here and now, not the understanding of simple intellectual concepts. And again, this is his facile rejection of Plato, or, as we mentioned in another episode covering Aristotle, his building from Plato. Plato has a lot to say about a priori rational truths, and if you read Plato in a certain way, you can think that Plato only considers a priori rational intellectualism as the highest good in life. Aristotle is cautioning against this interpretation of Plato. While we must come to know 
those a priori truths, it is not simply for intellectual reasons. It is because out of that knowledge, we live better lives here and now with others in the communities that we exist in. And that is what produces, again, the highest degree of happiness possible. Knowledge doesn't lead to knowledge for knowledge's sake. Knowledge leads to action because it is through embodied living that we actually become happy. We are not happy, Aristotle says, by simply knowing about the world, knowing about ourselves, and knowing about our friends. We become happy in living out the realities of what we come to know. By living out the reality of who we are, our nature, what our friends desire, etc., that is what actually makes us happy in life. And that is what produces the highest amount of pleasure in this life. Pleasure, therefore, is not just a criterion of right action. It is contingent upon intellectual knowledge. Again, you should be beginning to understand how Aristotle sees body and soul or mind as completely interrelated together. Pleasure is not simply through right understanding, and it is not merely from bodily action. It is through the combination of the two. One will have an even greater amount of bodily happiness and pleasure when they understand that loving other people, for instance, is an important aspect of human existence. By understanding what brings us happiness, when we encounter it in this life, in our bodies, we actually have, according to Aristotle, a greater happiness than those who might be having pleasure, but who do so without understanding. Likewise, those who simply understand, but never manifest in this life the actions necessary to bring about the intellectual virtues they are coming to know, will ultimately be less happy. Aristotle and his entire philosophy hinges on this connection between knowledge and action, knowledge and living. One acts virtuously, again, not on account of mere virtuousness or of the action itself, but on the actor's knowledge. And knowledge does not exist for mere knowledge. Knowledge for knowledge's sake is not something that Aristotle advocates. Aristotle advocates knowledge for the purpose of good living, because in good living, you will be happy. Virtue, then, is a matter of personal motivation that comes from knowledge. And this is why Aristotle is keen on promoting the intellectual virtues. We must live a robust life. We are not just bodies. We are not just souls. We are both. There is a hylomorphic unity, a union of body and soul that is part and parcel of human nature and human existence. Virtue is not an emotion. Virtue is not just an action. Virtue is not just knowledge. Virtue is everything. Virtue comes about in active life through the knowledge of knowing nature, good and evil, and practicing in real life the manifestation of that knowledge in order to have a happy existence and a happy life. And when you live that life from the knowledge you gain, you also make other people better and you also make them happier. Therefore, the intellectual virtues you come to know about yourself, your nature, and life rubs off on other people. It is not just you who become better by having knowledge of how to live. Others become better. And when we are all becoming better by having greater knowledge, greater understanding 
of how we should live, everyone and everyone's happiness increases. And that is an essential, important aspect of Aristotle's ethical philosophy. You do not live a virtuous life merely for yourself, because as we've stated in the other episode covering the Nicomachean ethics, you are a social animal. You have a social nature. By living a good and happy life derived from knowledge of nature and existence, you also improve the lives of everyone around you. And when you and everyone around you are happy, happiness flourishes, happiness improves. We even know this at an intuitive level in our interactions with other people. Your mood, your happiness is often related to the disposition of another. When happiness encounters sadness, there is a tendency for happiness to win out or for sadness to win out. Aristotle is arguing that by becoming virtuous in life, by having intellectual virtues and intellectual knowledge impact how you live, it will ultimately impact others. And when, and when everyone is happy, everyone is happier. This is the essence then of Aristotle's Nicomachean ethics. By coming to understand who we are and living according to our natures, we become happy and our happiness impacts and rubs off on others who become happy. And when everyone is happy, we have achieved the purpose of human life.